right, let's start with your athletic background. Like, what sports did you play growing okay. up? I started in gymnastics. Okay. So I did gymnastics from pretty much kindergarten until seventh grade. And then once I got to middle school, I was getting a lot taller. Mm -hmm. And I was a level nine at the time. And I don't know. I just don't know if I fell out of love with gymnastics or just, you know, wanted to play middle school sports. Yeah. So my dad, um, going into seventh grade, in August, I went to tennis tryouts okay. and I didn't make the team. And I was like, this is, I was like, how did I not make the team? <laughs> so like our volleyball coach at Providence Day was like, hey, come out for volleyball. And my dad was like, I don't know anything about volleyball, but we went and got knee pads, a volleyball, whatever. I tried out for the team and um, made the team in seventh grade. And then I ended up um, loving it. But at the same time, um, when I quit gymnastics, I'd been at the same gym since I was young. Um, they had all-star cheerleading there. So the all-star cheerleading coach was like, hey, um, we'd love to have you on the senior team. So in seventh grade, I was cheering um, with the juniors and seniors and became like the youngest, um, I guess, girl to be a part of the senior squad. Okay. So I traveled with them for three years, learned a lot at that age, wow. being with girls that old. Yeah, sure. Um, and uh, we won three national championships, but in the meantime, I was still playing volleyball in seventh and eighth grade, and then made varsity my freshman year. Had to give up uh, gymnastics for that so I could play club volleyball because I knew I wanted to play in college. And then um, just dedicated my high school to um, volleyball and then played at Appalachian State. Um, but in the meantime, I also played basketball in middle school, diving, um, took uh, jazz tap and ballet while I was a gymnast, wow. um, and a little bit of river dance with my gymnastics coach. What am I missing? Volleyball, um, basketball. I think I didn't like basketball because my dad forced it on me so much. Like there was one summer he was like, you can't go on vacation until you go to this camp. Mm. And I was like, Ugh. I don't know, but yeah. yeah. That's so everything. For, for what we talk about a lot, where early specialization is is really not a good thing for kids, and that's scientifically proven. Yeah. And, uh, our mutual friend Joe DeFranco has said that when he worked with you, you were one of the best female athletes he's ever worked with, and that's kind of a Re testament to that. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> thanks, Joe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so now, does it ever enter your age back then that one day I'm going to be in my dad's business, like I'm going to be in pro wrestling, or just that's just the farthest thing from your mind? No. Yeah. Like I, I try to. Uh, explain to people like this was not anything I ever dreamed about. Like when yeah. I went to shows with my dad, I looked at people like Stacy Keebler and Tori and Lita and Trish as like these supermodels. And yeah. I just never, not that it had anything to do with that. I just, I was like, I didn't like, I didn't care for wrestling. It was right. like, okay, my dad's, you know, Ric Flair, my idol. Like I can, I, even in my head, I wasn't like, oh, my dad's Ric Flair. I'm like, oh, he's just dad. And he gets yeah. on my nerves. <laughs> yeah. And like when his music hit, I'd get goosebumps and just like care about those moments. But right. like nothing in between. I didn't, I don't know. I just, now my brother's is a different, you know, right. case or scenario. But no, I just was your typical kid. And my dad um loved taking me, um, to camps and being a part of whatever sport I was in at the time. And he was very hands-on and my mom too. Yeah. And when you were in high school and college, did, what did you think you would do for a living? As you mm, got older? I don't know. I don't think I ever was super passionate about anything. Like I loved okay. volleyball, yeah. but I just loved being competitive. Yeah. I just, um, when I, you know, had practice, I always wanted to be the first in every drill. Mm. Um, always wanted to win. Um, and I wish I had really, you know, started volleyball younger, you know, to be better. It was just, I, you know, was dabbling in so many things. Um, I don't know. I just didn't, I knew I wanted to play in college, but even in college, like I quit volleyball my junior year. And that's when I think things started to really, um, be hard for me. Cause like my parents had just got divorced going into my freshman year. And then I got to college and, you know, I'd never been on my own before. And then when I quit volleyball two and a half years later, I just, kind of felt like I lost myself because it was the first time I wasn't in organized sports or a part of a team. And right. then I met this boy and, um, I don't know. I just don't, I didn't feel whole again until I started wrestling. I okay. never just had like a dream, I guess, hmm. to believe it. I don't know. Yeah. Just. And then, so what kind of leads you into wrestling? Um, so 2012, we were at the four horsemen hall of fame induction. 
um, at WrestleMania 24. And uh, it was the first time in like a couple years that I had like gone somewhere without my husband at the time. And um, I was kind of going through a rough time and just personal training back in, I did love personal training. Okay. I will say that when I started personal training after college, not that I had your kind of knowledge or Joe's, I'm like, yeah. God, I had no business training these people, <laughs> but I fell in love with my clients. Okay. Like, where, and where were you doing that? Uh, Charla Fitness in Charlotte. Yeah. Um, it's not there anymore, but I just loved working with these older men and women and them like teaching me as I'm like being their cheerleader. Right. I liked being their cheerleader. Yeah. Um, how long did you do that for? I did that from after college up until I moved in July of 2012 to Tampa. Okay. So I did it for two years. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, at the Hall of Fame, and um, my little brother Reed had been, you know, trying to get into wrestling, and um, my parents took him out, of, or he dropped out of college. Um, you know was just working the independence, but he was there anyways. And he was there meeting a, uh, one of the agents, John Laurinaitis at dinner. And Johnny was telling Reed, like, this is what you needed to do, or this is what you need to do to get into the company. And he had actually, you know, failed a drug test prior to getting in. So they were giving him a second chance. And, um, I, I was kind of like, why, you know, I, not that I ever wanted to do it, but Reed was like, or Johnny looked at me and was like, why aren't you doing it? And I know, probably Johnny was just saying it to appease my dad. Sure. You know, because my dad was like, oh, she'd be so good. She's so athletic. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask you to backtrack for a second. Did yeah. your dad ever mention that to you when you were growing up? Like, you should do this? Did he ever push you? Or, no, because, no. like, he didn't talk. Like, so even when I started wrestling, he didn't talk about wrestling with me. It was, like, okay. it was just his, like, he talked about it with Reed and David. But, like, now that I'm in it, there's a whole nother, like, like subculture and, like, it's... It's its own little world. Yeah. Uh, so I'll get to that. But he always said it'd be something I'd be good at, okay. but he never saw me enjoying the schedule. Cause at the time, like I always had a boyfriend mm. and I was off doing my own thing. And he, I, no, he never pictured his daughter being a wrestler. Yeah. So okay. when Johnny said that, I'm sure it was just to like appease my dad and like, yeah. Hey, I'm just gonna say this because Rick thinks that <laughs> right. she'd be so good or whatever. Right. So I was like, oh, I don't know. And then Reed was like, yeah, we got to do this together. And um, I think when I said yes, it was one because I thought I could go there with my brother Reed and we could live together and I could help him get on the right track because my brother um, uh, had a, uh, a drug addiction. So I thought, okay, if I went there with him, you know, I could get him on the right path. And if I got in, he would work harder to get in. And then at the same time, whether I was lying to myself or not, I needed to escape the situation that I was in. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for an out. Right. Whether my mind was telling me that, I don't know, because I never pictured myself wrestling or, no, I just didn't know. I just wasn't into it. Like how they did their makeup and hair. I remember <laughs> looking at Michelle McCool in 2012, uh -huh. just thinking like, wow, like I would love to look like that. Like she's such a star. Yeah. Like I just never viewed myself like that. So anyways, I, I was running. And whether I was running with Reed or running away from my ex, I I just went and it changed my life. So then I remember Hunter calling me, Triple H called me a few weeks later and was like, you know, I'm just you know, telling you that just because we're letting you in doesn't mean we're gonna let your brother in. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know that Hunter. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like, no, I'm gonna get in and it's gonna get read in, yeah. right? And then um, he's like, so we just hired a new talent, um, uh, a new a new guy that's had a talent that's gonna hire, or I don't know how to phrase it, like a new hiree. Okay. And um, I was actually his first talent, so he called me, and he's like, okay, we need to send you to Pittsburgh. Um, to get your medical done, but we're just telling you now, like you're not gonna get any handouts because you're Ric Flair's daughter. Right. And I was like, all right, listen, I'm a D1 athlete. I could run circles, I guarantee you. But I mean, yeah. I didn't say that to him, but I was like, yeah. mm-hmm, yes, sir. Um, and uh, he said that and he uh, was just like, you know, you're gonna get drug tested and all these things. And I'm like, oh God, like they just really think I'm a joke. Not a joke, but just yeah. whatever. So um, then, that now, was now, in May. And your dad are, are fairly close friends, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. I owe so much to Trip. Like he's really taken care of me and my dad and been there like yeah. in really hard times. Yeah. And he didn't mean it mean. Sure. He's just like, 
just painting like the reality of like okay this girl just out of nowhere wants to wrestle and not only wrestle like her dad's and i didn't even realize at the time like how much my dad meant to the industry to me my dad was just really? like no wow, that's crazy yeah, yeah because i didn't like follow wrestling now yeah. my brother on the other hand did but i just was like well what does he mean? I'm gonna get any handouts. Like I could do a moon salt. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't see any of the other girls doing whatever. Right. Yeah. So I was cocky about that, but I didn't even know what I was getting into. So I just knew the first day that I showed up that um, I might not know anything about wrestling, but I could work hard, mm. and uh, that's what I did. And the rest is like history. Yeah. Well, take us through the, the beginning at, at NXT and, and NXT. How that went. Yeah. So. Um, at first it was hard. I reported in July and I was still um, with my ex at the time and we had just bought a house and I don't talk about this often, but the same month that I moved uh, to Tampa, my childhood home foreclosed. So my mom and my little brother moved into the house that I had just bought with in with when I moved to Tampa and was supposed to meet me to, or, uh, my ex was supposed to meet me down in um, Tampa, but I got there and um, we like in the first two weeks, we had this blow up drill and I had won the blow up drill and I could just see like, okay, uh, Flair's kid can hang. Yeah. Um, but was it was, uh, so at, at FCW, there were two rings in this room and there's you know four turnbuckles right yeah, yeah. so all you had to do was get in get out get in get out but if you were super athletic you jump over like that uh, back out in and out so yeah. like i'm just passing everyone and it was like a co-ed class okay. so in and out in and out in and out and then hitting the ropes doing it yeah. and i was just like just like our people. bill demont the new coach at the time was like hey get out of flair's way get out of flair's way and i was like okay i can do this yeah. i can last but um I just didn't know the lingo. I didn't know like a character and I just was also going through personal things. So it was super hard, but I just found myself for the first time belonging. Not that I never felt, I don't know. I just, yeah. in college, like I loved volleyball, but the minute I had quit volleyball and left my team, I just lost everything about me. Okay. So then I like just got, I got a group of girlfriends, the, the divas and, mm -hmm. uh, then they hired Sarah Del Rey, the first ever female coach, and I took to her, and Dusty Rhodes was there at the time, and he was like a dad to me, which kind of made it hard because I think like the talent could see that. Yeah. But at the same time, I was working super hard, so they couldn't you know, take anything away from me. Right. Um, but then, so like once I earned the this respect is, so of my peers, as a kid growing my up, my whole life, around, yeah. like Cody and I went to the same preschool. Oh, wow. Uh, and he would That's even crazy. like say that in promo class, and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. god this is terrible yeah. like they gotta hate me but no like i i can't like the talent and i um we got close fast after they saw that i was like gonna work hard um but it's funny uh so ryan nimeth mm -hmm. briley whatever uh was in developmental when i was and okay. he had come up to me um during one of the practices and i guess he told me that like he asked me a question and i was like oh my my dad's Ric Flair, but don't tell anybody <laughs> <laughs> or something. He has the story or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, so mortified. Yeah. <laughs> like they, they're like, I didn't even know of dirt sheets then. Like all the kids had already read yeah. that I had, you know, the dirt sheets were like Ric Flair's daughters come in. And, right. um, that's what I was going to ask. So you tried to hide it. I of. tried to hide it, but yeah. everyone already like knew. Yeah. And, uh, what was the, and then like also too, you have to have a tryout at the school to get in. Mm -hmm. So most of the kids already, I had been seen or seen the other talent coming in. Like I didn't have yeah. a tryout. So that was already against me too. Cause they're like, Ugh, she didn't even have a tryout. So yeah. like, that's why I admire, you know, Becky so much. And then like, uh, Sasha and Bailey, who I, you know, came in with. Yeah. Cause I'm like, how cool is it that they worked so hard for something and then like made it like right. that? Like, I think I, that's always sticks with me. Maybe mm -hmm. it's like a, a chip on my shoulder. Cause I'm like, I didn't, have to work hard to get in but dang it like i'm just gonna never stop working hard once i'm in to be grateful yeah. for the opportunity and to feel like i deserve to be there yeah it's weird it's a weird feeling now, now how does it work is it like um 
classes come is is it oh, can people try out at any time or is it just like a class comes in and then so it's eight it's weeks it opens up or something it's so different now like okay. at fcw i think they held classes that you had to pay a certain amount of money uh -huh. and then they held like clinics and then you'd get picked from the clinic and i think maybe there was one or two a year um but at the time there wasn't as much talent coming out of the developmental system onto the main roster. Now with NXT, you see new talent debuting all the time. Right. Whereas the gap, and now because the gap between NXT or what we call developmental, which mm -hmm. isn't even developmental anymore because yeah. NXT is its third brand, um, you see the writers and the higher ups you know, seeing and what the talent can do back then, like they came once a year. Yeah. So maybe one superstar a year or even every two years would make it. So yeah. like, it's just way different. Now you have NXT, you have a hundred kids there and all different levels, all different classes, but yeah. then they have an opportunity to get on NXT television. Right. And then if they see on NXT television, which is already on the network, it's 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 totally different. Yeah, yeah, but it's so, just so grown. Who did you come up with that's on the main roster now? Becky, Sasha. Um, so when I was in FCW, Roman Reigns was there. Yeah. Seth Rollins was the first ever NXT champion. Okay. Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, um, Cesaro had just left. Um, girls, Paige, Sasha, uh, Bailey, Becky, Alexa Bliss, um, uh, Dana Brooke. I'm just trying to think of guys that like JJ, pretty much the whole roster. Wow. Like the, like I, Cena wasn't in, uh, yeah. developmental. The Bellows weren't in yeah. developmental with me. Um, that'd be the easiest way to do it. Cause pretty much now both Ross, it's crazy. Like, right. it's like, wow. If you really think about that it, crazy. who would like, um, uh, the Los Matadores or Primo and Epico wouldn't have been in developmental. Seamus wasn't in developmental with me. Okay. So he's been up there. Pretty much everybody. Yeah, it's crazy. And then, so how did you and the rest of the four horsewomen kind of develop that bond, and you and Becky especially? Yeah, uh, it just happened. Like, yeah. so back then, it was unheard of for women, you know, well, on the main roster, but even to have like to steal the show or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So what happened was NXT started to take off, and NXT held its first ever pay per view. And it happened to be Paige was going to be crowned the first ever NXT Women's Champion. And it was Paige versus Emma. And I just remember sitting in the audience being like, well, I don't want to sit back here. I'm always first string. Yeah. Like, this sucks. Yeah. So I saw them and I knew uh, Bailey and Sasha and Becky probably had the same feeling. And we just thought to ourselves, like, no, like, we want the guys to respect us. We want to be as good as the guys. But... At the same time, like those three had been wrestling for so long. Like here I was just trying to keep up and learn everything. And I just wanted to be as good as them. Right. So I took pieces from each one of those girls that I learned with. And as like they were getting better, they were doing this with me. And okay. I was just picking it up really fast, I think just because of my athletic background. Yeah. So the next pay-per-view after Paige and Emma was me versus Natty. And I just remember thinking like, I'm going to be better than Paige versus Emma. And uh, that's... So then we had that match and then it went to me and Sasha and then it led to the four that's so it led to the four way on a pay per view. Uh, and then the crowd started calling us the four horsewomen. Okay. So it just like organically happened. Yeah. And then uh, this is kind of an aside, but what was the thing with um, Ronda Rousey and the four horsewomen? Is that was cause, cause she was a fan of your dad's right? Kind of. I don't or know. So before? like I didn't, I'm learning a lot about MMA from Becky. Okay. So like when Ronda started, um, like they would hold, you up know, the they'd hold up the four, but yeah. like, I never realized like, oh yeah, the, the NXT fans are calling us the four. So I just like, cause my character was cocky. I was just like, yeah, well I'm a flair. Yeah. So we're the original four, but I think all of uh, Rhonda's friends and her are huge wrestling fans, yeah. which now is like unfolding yeah. on TV. Right. So like, it was just, it'd be cool. I, it's just like four versus four. Yeah. Now, uh, I don't know this. And, and cause when you first came up to the main roster, you didn't use your last name. 
And then it seems no. like within the last year it happened or the last... No, oh, one day Vince was like, we're going to call you Charlotte Flair. <laughs> <laughs> but what's funny, because like when I got to developmental, I wasn't allowed to woo. I wasn't allowed to chop, oh, strut. Oh, really? No, and like wow, they okay. named me Charlotte. Yeah. Like I think it was like because my dad was billed from Charlotte. Sure. So like we'll just name you Charlotte. Like, yeah. well, the joke's on you guys, <laughs> which I love it now. But yeah. uh, um, so now does everyone call you Charlotte? Yeah. And you're cool with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, but in NXT, you didn't use your last name. No. Okay. I think the thing was, I think it, w it was more of a, like, you can do this kid right. kind of thing. Like, to have his last name, and now I understand, is like, a, like a lot to carry. Yeah. But I think once Vince was like, yeah, this, we're going to call her Flair. Like, she does, like, she can do it. Yeah. That's why they added it, I think. Okay. And, and when was that? A year ago? God, it had to be a year ago. Yeah. Was it after me? I think it... Mm, I don't know. I think it was right. leading up to WrestleMania. So would you just get to the building one day? and, and They were like, yeah, we're calling you Charlotte Flair. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what did you say? What did you think? I was like, awesome. Okay. Well, because I, I, that's how they had to explain it to me that way. Yeah. So... Yeah. And then also, too, like, I like the wrestlers with double names. Right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So talk about the, the, the first night you came up. It was you, Becky, and Sasha. And Sasha. Yeah. 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 Um, first night debuting on the main yeah, roster. So I was having a hard time because I had already dropped the NXT title like six months before we debuted or seven months. Okay. So I was like frustrated. I was like, everyone else debuted with the NXT title. They were ready to go. Like, how come I'm dropping it? And I'd been uh, stuck yeah. in NXT. Yeah. So I felt like... Why was that? Did you ever get an explanation? Uh-uh. So I just, well, like the dirt sheets at the time were like, you know, she's not pretty enough. Vince doesn't like her. She looks like a man. Whatever. Just mean things. Mm -hmm. So like it started to get to me. I'm like, yeah, why am I not going up? Am I not good enough? Am I not pretty enough or whatever? And then when they, we got the call and all three of us went up, um, I was a baby face and I just didn't feel a connection with the crowd because the only reason I had turned baby face was because the crowd had like, this is how I take it. Now maybe there's there's another opinion. So yeah. I just want to put that out there. But I'm like, the crowd turned me because they knew I was the next to go up and they had seen some really great matches. So they were like cheering me, but like I'm naturally a heel, like right. the bad guy. Yeah. So, um, you prefer when I, working as a heel? Oh yeah. 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 But right now I'm happy. I mean, it's just all about layers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I debuted, I just wasn't connecting with the audience. I was like, they have no reason to cheer me. Like, Right now, they just the mainstream audience just knows me as this like tall blonde that's athletic and Ric Flair's daughter. Like that's not, I don't know, relatable. Yeah. So, but it all ended up the way it was supposed to. Yeah. Because like them debuting me as a babyface like turned me heel. Like maybe they had a see. Now I'm like maybe they just had this master plan all <laughs> right, along. Right. Yeah. So talk about being part of this women's revolution evolution that's going on right now yeah um it's really hard to like it's like i guess i take it for granted because i'm in it and i never take a step back to think like wow look what we've done as a whole in two years yeah um but i know for female or for women empowerment and showing that talent supersedes looks in a male dominated world yeah. and that for the first time um in a company that no one thought was possible the women are main eventing and when you hear that the women are main eventing you're not like holy cow because we've done it a yeah. couple times yeah. and we're getting more segments and people are actually tuning in for the match and not you know panty and right. lingerie yep segments and that's really cool and to think that i'm a part of this movement but i think too for me it's just my life's changed so much in such a short short period of time that i never pictured myself here and also in like this incredible journey like at wrestlemania 32 um me becky and sasha being the center of the at&t stadium and the largest wrestlemania in history um and we stole the show and like roman reigns undertaker yeah. shane and triple h were like the eye candy on the arena yeah like it was like it's that's amazing. how i knew like whoa we right. made it yeah and it was just it's there's so much more to be done in my opinion
but it's just, it's incredible. And I think that when you go to shows now and you see little girls, um, and little boys, but like little girls with their dads and having these athletes to look up to and like, it's awesome. Like people wearing Becky's goggles. It's like, I don't, it's just the culture's changing and it's not like, Oh, that's a diva. It's no, like that's one of the wrestlers. Yeah. It's so amazing. It must be so cool to be part of. And I mean, do you ever feel the weight of it though? Like this is, I mean, culturally what's going on in society now. And then you add that with the fact that there's pressure on you as Ric Flair's daughter. Like there's gotta be a lot of weight that you carry. Right? There Sometimes. is. Yeah. 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 But I think that's what like drives me. Cause I feel like I'm making up for my twenties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I, I do doubt myself all the time, but something just, you know, makes me keep pushing and learning and like, I just want to be a better me. And like, it's funny. Cause like the better I get at work, the better my personal life gets. And mm. I just, I'm like, wow, anything is possible if I just really put my mind to it because like I main evented a pay-per-view, the first ever money in the bank, WrestleMania, I like to think that like, no, you need to tell, I need to tell myself every day, like I'm going to main event WrestleMania. Yeah. So like that pressure of getting to that point. And also like I've had so many amazing opportunities with the company. I just want to make sure that like I own up to every moment. Right. That's the pressure. Like yeah. that it's not all hype. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's just taking every time you're on camera as an opportunity. Like whether even if it's a backstage segment for 30 seconds, yeah. like know that it's still I love that. I love a that. moment. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little crazy at times and like I probably could like have some more downtime, but I'm like, dang, I'm like, I'm about to be 32. Like these are the years like I'll, I don't know something. Yeah. I just go, 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 go. Yeah, But see, it's that mindset. I mean, in, in, in any line of work, but specifically to wrestling, I can't remember who it was. If it was stone cold or Foley or someone who said, if you're rest- if I'm left wrestling in front of 15 people, I'm doing the same thing I would do. If it was a yes. WrestleMania main event. And you have to have that yeah. mindset. And like my dad told me, uh, once also too, like my dad's work ethic is incredible. Like yeah. I know like his 30 for 30 came out and he was very, Still haven't seen it. Oh man, it's it. so yeah. sad. Yeah. Um, my dad just worked his ass off and like, yeah, he uh, drank, but like I, as a kid, I never heard my dad say he was sore, had a headache, like nothing. So I grew up like even today when I'm like, oh, I don't, I'm a little tired. Like there's just no sympathy there. Yeah. So like, I feel like that way in the ring. Like if I'm tired or sore, like, no, you're going to do the same match that you do at this live event that you do at a main event paper. And I know it's like, well, you want to think longevity, but like, right. why, how would you say that to my dad? And I think he's the, the greatest <laughs> right. of all time, but right. this is what he did say. He goes, it's great to get to the top, but it's harder to stay on top. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm like, well, I always want to be on top. So even when like, I know that your career goes like this in wrestling, but it's like the minute I start to fall from the top, it's like, how am I going to get to the top? Yeah. Like, not that it's like me, 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 but it's like, kind of is that like, I always want to be on top. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Because then you wouldn't have that legendary career that your dad has. I mean, like some, and some people, and you probably see it like where people get pushed down the card a little bit and they kind of accept that that's the reality. Like they write that narrative and that's I won't accept it. Yeah. And I know that's bad. And like the, yeah. the, even if the fans are like, dude, we're t- sick of seeing Charlotte. <laughs> but I'm like, no, I always, yeah. dang it. I want to be at the top. I can, pr- I can be better or like fix one, uh, aspect of my ring work. Like yeah. I don't like, I don't, perf- I don't care to be the good guy. Cause I think just like my stature and like, I don't think my character is relatable, yeah. but being um, a good guy on SmackDown right now has really taught me a lot in terms of, like now I know when I do go back uh, heel or bad guy that I'm gonna be just that much of a better bad guy because I took mm. being a good guy so serious. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, it's no, weird. I love that. <laughs> Talk about, uh, I thought it was so cool that not only did you have the first women's Royal Rumble, but it actually was the main event ahead of the guys. Which Dude, was it was amazing. so hard to sit ringside. That's what I was gonna say. Like how I mean, it's amazing. This thing's going on. You're part of it, but then you're sitting there not competing. You're at ringside. That had to be super frustrating, kind of. Oh yeah, I was yeah. like, 
I'm really happy for you guys. Right, right, right. So happy. I mean, because you were such a large part of it over the previous two, three years, and then you can't compete. I mean, like, I, I like, bitched to my dad, or excuse me, I argued with my dad for, like, three weeks. I'm like, Dad, I'm not in the Rumble. And yeah. he's like, yeah, but whoever wins is going to face you. I'm like, no, they're going to face me or Lexi. Like, they get to pick. And he's like, yeah, but just... it." It's like those moments, like, okay, so whoever wins will face you two, and it's centered around the title. But I'm like, it's the first ever, though. It's not. And like, But I just have to remember, it'll come back around, and there will be another rumble. Yeah. And But um, it was amazing to watch. Like, yeah. the girls worked their butts off, and uh, I I'm, like, match. the guys couldn't have followed that. Yeah. Like, I don't mean that, to, but, like, we do still have so much to prove. Like, it is yeah. great that we're getting all these monumental matches or first times, yeah. but, like, we still have to deliver. Sure. So, like, the guys the guys are always going to have a rumble every year. Right. The women might not. So we have to over-deliver, and they definitely over-delivered. Yeah. So, and, and then uh, Ronda debuted that night, correct? Yeah. So, kind of, what are your thoughts now as you're heading into WrestleMania? <laughs> Embarrassment because my dad does all these like podcasts saying like she's gonna whip her butt. I'm like, Dad, can you please stop saying that? Um, to be a part of that was amazing. Um, to see her walk out and just, I just look at her. I'm like, man, she opened the door for us. I think at WWE because they saw that she was a you know, a draw and like could headline a pay-per-view yeah. and she was a female and she was the biggest star at the time. And, um, yeah, so she definitely opened doors for the women at WWE and it's cool that it, well, you know, it's really cool. Anyone on the outside that wants to be a part of our company because it just gets people who aren't into wrestling. It gets eyes on us right. and anything that elevates the women's division and brings excitement to it. I'm all for. Yeah. It just seems like she's really taking it seriously. Like yeah. it's not just yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. So let's uh actually one one quick thing. Do you have any funny stories about Becky from like riding with her and rooming with her or anything that she'd be okay with you telling? Uh <laughs> so like if I'm in a mood, yeah, she'll be like, Charlotte, you're being sharp. Oh. So like <laughs> yeah, we yeah, have like code <laughs> Yeah. Where it's because this is where we're always together, but she's yeah. like family, so like we fight like sisters too. Yeah. So not fight, but like have our like she's super passive aggressive yeah. and it bugs me. I'm yeah. like, dude, just tell me like <laughs> well, what were we doing? She said something about like, did you put your bag in a different way? <laughs> Cause her bag wasn't fitting, and I'm like, uh-huh. dude, just move the bag. Right. Like what? Like I don't know. I don't. But it was a. I don't know how she said it. But it's just like funny. We have our own like little. Yeah. But it's, was that hard when you guys were on separate shows? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because like she's my person. Yeah. Um. We, we just like all the same. Like we're totally different, but we're not. Yeah. Like she's the only person that. I don't know, I can room with and I can eat with and like we're on the same schedule and we're on the go, go, go. And like, we're not like, you'll see us in workout gear all the time. I don't know. She's yeah. like my person. She's like family. Like my family would do anything for her. Yeah. And like not having her when I was on Raw was super hard because I didn't have my person. And then being yeah. back on SmackDown, it's, yeah, it's just, and like, she's one of the most genuine people I know. Oh, 100%. Like, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And I tell this story all the time, and I don't think she's even read the book. But when we had WrestleMania 32, um, the three-way, uh, I, like, really wanted the title um, to win it. And, like, I, you know, we weren't sure what was happening and whatever. But here's, like, my best friend that had wa- wanted to be a wrestler her whole life and have that moment and like see that see her have that moment but like everything that i was feeling she was supportive and a friend like that's an unbelievable person yeah to like to swallow that moment and be happy for your friend yeah like i just i tell that story but like she's that good of a person yeah i'm getting goosebumps just yeah like i just she's amazing like she wrote me this letter just saying like um they chose the right girl. Oh, I'm gonna get emotional. Oh, wow. They were like, you chose the right girl. And just like having my best friend said that and having yeah. her having my back just like gave me the confidence. Yeah. Oh, she's such a good person. <laughs> she is. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about fitness and, and nutrition a little bit. 
we were speaking about that earlier. So tell us what your workouts are typically like. Um, so today, why I was late seeing you, uh, I started with the Ollie Olympic lift warm up. So it was like, I think that's the one it was. It was uh, five pulls, five front squat, five back squat, five good mornings, and then do it three times. Mm -hmm. And then I had um, uh, five sets of three and then one set of two cleans. Okay. And he had the weights in for me. And then after that, I had. So you do uh, do percentage based stuff, or he just tells you exactly what he tells me exactly. Okay. Um, I well, not all the time. Yeah. But this program right now, going into mania, I'm like, dude, I want my numbers. Yeah. But he's tracked it all anyways, so those numbers are from a percentage. Okay. Um, so I and had. What's the uh, how many days a week do you lift? Well, my program has four days. Okay. But like on the road, there's nothing to do during the day, so I like. I want to go train. So yeah. sometimes if I literally will train uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, sometimes. Okay. And I know it's not good, but it's just that when I take yeah. the off days, I am noticing that my body is recovering and like I'm growing yeah. like in the places I want to. But um, so it's a lot of Olympic lifting. Yeah. So then I had Some the hung lifts. Hungarian snatches, uh, back squat, sumo deadlifts, and then abs. Okay. And then tomorrow will be like push press, um, incline bench, some machine. Yeah. So it's upper lower split? Well, I think it's it's definitely full bot. Like today okay. I did clean and jerks. Yeah. And then tomorrow okay. I'll do push press. Gotcha. So you still use your legs on push yeah. press. Yeah. But I just like I just love it. It's better I mean like I used to do bodybuilding type workouts, uh -huh. but I had no rhyme or reason and yeah. there was I wasn't changing. I never knew and I thought it was me and then like I definitely, I think I had this thing about, I don't know, like I just would never ask for help or yeah. follow a plan or maybe I just thought I was too good for it. I yeah. don't know, but, uh, or a combination of all, but now that I have a trainer and he's telling me what to do and I'm like seeing results, I'm like, oh, it's okay to ask for help. Like that's what I should have been doing the whole time. Yeah. And so you said you, you noticed way more changes with the last year or two since you've been doing this versus what you were yes, doing before. Yes, my whole life. Yeah. Yeah, just in the last year. So what would you say were huge time wasters, like just doing a lot of cardio and high rep stuff? Yes, a lot of cardio, yeah. uh, high rep, yeah. um, doing like four sets of five squats at the same weight. That mm -hmm. is a waste of time. Yeah. Like why am I going to do those squats and then just go do 50 minutes of cardio? Yeah. Like, I mean, now I just, if I'm doing cardio um, – once in a while, I'll get on the elliptical for like 30 minutes and do nothing. But it's usually like two days a week, I'll do um, sprints. Sometimes I'll do like incline where it's like 30 second sprint up, uh, two minutes off, 30 on, whatever yeah. for 20 minutes. Or I'll do like um, as fast as I can, 20 seconds, a minute 40 off for 20 minutes. Or just things like that. Yeah. Or like the rower for 20 minutes I love. Right. Okay. And do you do much mobility work? Unless I like see friends or like trainers that <laughs> right, want right. to put me through it. Yeah. I will if they put me through it. Yeah. 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 Do you do yoga? No. no. I did one yoga class with Becky a couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? Out here? Yeah. Or? No, not out here. Uh, Where were we? I don't know where were we And you were. just weren't feeling it? No, I like it. I just have to do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what's your nutrition typically like? Well, so my plan right now is... We'll give a shout out to our friend Jason Phillips. He's yes, the plan. he's yeah. life changing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Jason has me on for breakfast. It's three fourths cup of oats, a medium banana, and a scoop of whey. Um, the next meal is four ounces of chicken, five ounces of white potato, ten asparagus spears. Uh, post workout, fifteen grams of whey, um, thirty grams of carb. Uh, I can have a half a cup of strawberry snack, an ounce of cashews snack. Um, next meal is five ounces of tuna, half an avocado and cucumber. And then my last meal is five ounces of steak, a cup of quinoa and beets. Wow. So do you use a meal prep company or anything? No, I do it on my own. You do? Yeah. So and Jason sent me like a little uh, uh, scale too. Oh, okay. The hardest thing to find is the beets. Yeah. Like that's a pain in the ass. So that's got to be super hard to do traveling. So walk us through that. So you get somewhere. What do you go to Whole Foods when you land or how does that work? Yeah. So, okay. So 
typically if I'm home on a Friday night, mm -hmm. um, like this week I'm not, so I already grabbed half of my meals for tomorrow and then before I leave Friday, um, I will pack two days worth. So, um, and then I will, so I'll freeze all the meals Friday night or in the freezer. I'll put them in my bag Saturday morning, get on a plane, they get warm. I'll get to the hotel that night from anywhere from 12, one, two, three, four in the morning yeah. in the next town, put the containers in the refrigerator at the hotel and then try to get through two days. But we always go to whole, if, if there's a whole foods, cause yeah. like a lot of the time we're in cities that don't have whole foods. Right. So I'll just go wherever if I need a cucumber or an avocado. Yeah. Um, but I just keep those meals or those trays with me, wash them in the sink and then do it o like yeah. over. It's, it's, you just have, I mean, you have to, Yeah. there's no other, like, I know a lot of the boys do like Chipotle, mm -hmm. but like, I just like for what I, I don't know. I just can't just go to Chipotle and eat two meals a day. Yeah. I don't know. But it's crazy. I mean, you're super busy. So if you can yeah. stick to a diet, anyone could do it. Yes. That's yeah. what like I harp on with my friends at home, but I have to realize that they're civilians. <laughs> um, they're like, but I just can't do it. I'm like, cause I, I, unless you're in this, I don't think like even I'll be like texting Jason and he'll be like, wow, you're there. I'm like, dude, we are in a different city. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. And we fly out between 5 a.m., 6.30 a.m., yeah. Wednesday morning, and Tuesday night, we're not getting to our hotel till 12 or 1. Right. So you have like two or three hours of sleep, hop on a plane, then you get home, and then you recover Wednesday, and then you have to do normal things Thursday, maybe lift Friday, and then fly out Saturday. But like this week, I work every day. So like I did the thing with Becky today, media tomorrow. Friday, I fly to Detroit, land, do a car show, go to sleep and then Saturday fly out to Moline through Chicago wow. for the show. But, but it's, I like, I like structure. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like the meal plan thing though. Yeah. Yeah. And talk about uh, sleep because that's gotta be super hard with a schedule like that. Do you do anything to kind of regulate your sleep or to bounce back from jet lag or anything like that? So Any supplements part of like having a trainer now, I would like think I needed to get up earlier and do cardio. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, for sleep, I take magnesium. Okay. And before I started taking magnesium, I would take like four melatonin a night. Um, just because it's so hard, like, especially after a show, yeah. your adrenaline's up. Yeah. Or you do a four hour drive through the night and then you get to the hotel and you're restless. Right. But um, on planes, like I'm sleeping if I can. Okay. Yeah. And, Becky and I don't go out and do stuff. That's like another reason why we like to travel because we want those eight hours of sleep. Yeah. So I almost probably get more sleep on the road oh, wow. on like the live event nights because like, so say we get to the town at two, we'll just set our alarm clocks at 11, go to the gym, get food and then go to whatever city yeah. uh, is next. But it's hard. Like sleep, it's, it's like, well, do you have a life or do you sleep? I don't right. know. Right. It's you, but we, I mean, I, I have to have my sleep. Yeah. Like I can't function on that. I don't know. How often do you guys have a cheat meal? Or you personally? Well, right now it's once a week. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite cheat meal? Like if you uh, could have anything, what would it be? God, I like burger and fries and pizza and ice cream. <laughs> so bad. Yeah. But I think that's like the problem is cause like our job is all year round. So there's never an off time. Right. So like you, I, for me, what I'm realizing is just like pick my spots. Like when do I want to look my best? So like yeah. it's WrestleMania season. So I'm going to cut no cheat meals, no cheat meals. But yeah. now like since Jason has um, been working with me, mm -hmm. I was so carb depleted. I think that's why my cheat meals were such a big deal. Right. So you now don't crave them as much? I don't crave them as much yeah. because he's balancing me out. Like, totally. But I will say this, another Did thing. Did he have you eating more at first than you used to? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was like, no, eat a carb with every meal. So at first yeah. he didn't even write me a diet. He was just like, no, you have to eat carbs. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but like some days we were up for like 35 hours. <laughs> so like to stick. So I tell him, I'm like, dude, I just ate like five ounces of cashews because I am up past. And he's like him he's like fine with it but that's yeah. like another thing that's hard with sticking with a diet is like 
Well, because when you're, you're sleep deprived, you crave more junk food. Yeah, but what I like, found is Zevia. If I have mm. Zevia with me and just like okay. chug Zevia, that's been helping. Yeah, like with those really hard nights, like yeah. oh, like snacking. <laughs> yeah. Um, you talked a little bit before about your mindset, and obviously that contributes to your success. Is there anything else? Like, do you have any daily routines? Do you meditate? Do you journal? Do you do affirmations? Anything like that? Do you think? Uh, is essential for you or contributes to your success? Um, so the last two years, I worked with an author um, who did a dual memoir with my dad. And it came out last September. So I would say I journaled for two years. Okay. And I think I'm actually in a better place because I journaled. So maybe I should do that more. Mm. Just like getting things out and feelings. Yeah. but. Um, I've kind of learned right now that like, so I'm really into Grey's Anatomy. I'm rewatching it. I just like, when I go to bed, I just need those 30 minutes of like, just take my just mind mindless, off of, yeah. cause I'm a busy mind. That's my problem. Like yeah. I'm always overthinking. Like if some, like it'll be random, I'll be in the gym or something. And I'll think of something I said to somebody, I'll be like, Oh wait, did that come across wrong? Or like, <laughs> it's just, um, it's like my brain is like tires against a wall. It's right. like, always going yeah but like i think i need more zen so in my new house that i just bought um my sister-in-law is helping me have like this we're making this zen zen room with like a hammock and all these like funky uh lights and i don't know so yeah yeah i don't really have i guess just my work going to the gym yeah i had uh heard triple h at, at asked that question one time and he's like it's impossible with in our line of work to even have any kind of routine because everything changes so much yeah like your day to day it's always different like you can't even get in the routine really of and then when you have like a day off you're sleeping yeah, yeah. that's but right now i'm really looking forward to decorating my house that's like finding something outside but everything's right. just so work like yeah i don't like the demand for the talent in this company is like the schedule is so crazy and especially if you like want to always be on top and doing media like yeah. you f like sometimes just being with my brother and his kids and his wife like or my sister and her daughter like that's my zen time yeah just being yeah yeah and i'd imagine there's a pressure to say yes and be like do all the media stuff yeah because if not someone else is going to do it exactly yeah. no i want to do it yeah yeah, yeah. But there's no like, I mean, I guess, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to like, what if that's the one opportunity? Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, oh, I will say this. I played pickup volleyball with my other best friend, my civilian best friend, uh -huh. who I played with in college over Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I got to do this more. Like, we uh, just peppered, which you just like pass, set, hit, back and right. forth. And like, that I'm like, I really, really, really want to join a, um, a league, like nice. a pickup league. Yeah. But I'm like, when the heck am <laughs> right. I going to find the time <laughs> right, to do right, a right. pickup league on a Wednesday night? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, I know Bex and I share a favorite band, Pearl Jam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Pearl you? Jam. Who are some of your favorite artists? Uh, probably Guns N' Roses is my favorite, but only because, um, it was uh, my little brother, so when I listen to them, I think of him. I like Pearl Jam. I like or not Pearl uh, Guns N' Roses. Um, I used to love Red Hot Chili Peppers. Okay. Um, but I pretty much like everything. It really depends on my mood. Yeah. Okay. What do you listen to when you're training? Um. Probably techno. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. A lot of techno. Gotcha. Um. Are you a big reader? Do you, do you read much? Do you get much of a chance to read? Um, I like self-help books. Okay. Yeah, right now I'm reading um, How to Speak with Confidence. Okay. I just started. I don't even know that one. Who's that by? I just got it at the airport. Okay. I don't know, just like one of those self-helps that you can like, I don't know, they have, they all look the same. There's like 20 yeah. of them. Yeah. It's like, oh, I like that one. Yeah. I'll grab that one. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I'm only like 10 pages in. Yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, if you could go back and give yourself advice, you know, your 18 year old self, what would you say? I know it's a hard question, but like, what would you, or, or 
what matters more or less to you now than it did? Like, what have you figured out? You know what I mean? Oh, gosh. Maybe some mistakes you could have avoided if you'd known that. So my problem was codependency. Mm. Like, not... I couldn't be alone. Gotcha. And your girlfriends are very important. Yeah. Like, I always knew that, and I had, like, teams, but then, like, I just was with two guys, and I just, like, I didn't know, like, what what do you like to eat? Oh, that's what I like to eat. What do you like to watch? That's what I like to watch. What's your favorite? Like, okay. I would had no, yeah. like, interest or likes or who mm. I, like, was, and I just... Like I couldn't be alone. Yeah. Uh, and that, that happened at a really young age and I don't know why. Okay. Um, so real, like putting like your friends guy or girl, like, I don't know. I just was codependent. And so I don't know how did, to put that. Did you sacrifice some of your female friendships for just the, like the guy? You I sacrificed all with? my friend, like even okay. my family. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So nowadays you prioritize your friendships like with Becky or Sasha, whoever, m way more than you would have years ago. Yeah. You see the Even my family. It. Yeah. Like making like time right. I don't know why I did that. Yeah. So like I quit volleyball for a guy, like something I had like loved and Pat, like, why would I do that? Like I, qu I remember calling up my dad on the phone and be like, yeah, I'm quitting. I'm moving or I'm quitting up and I'm moving to Chapel Hill. Yeah. He was like, no, you're not. I'm like, yes, I am. Make me or watch me. Yeah. Hung up the phone, went to the coach, quit. And my dad was getting on a flight to Australia. So he couldn't get a hold of me. Yeah. But like, I, I don't know. Like I knew the guy, like we went to high school together, but like, why, why would I do that at 20 or 20 years old? Yeah. I don't know. And so now you must be just in a much happier place and a much better place now that you've kind of. Oh, yeah. yeah like yeah. even like from six months ago, I'm in a better place. But I think that's just constantly putting people in my life that I look up to. Like I got asked a question yesterday for an interview at work. And they were like, who's someone that um, inspires you or that you looked up to growing up? And I'm like, to be honest with you, it's just my the, like my friends that I've put in my circle. Yeah. Like I take a piece from each one of them yeah. and try to better myself. I love it. Like, I don't, I don't know, like not that my parents weren't great, but like, I just am trying to navigate through life now with like people that I just men and women that I find inspired. Like they're not, they're just your average day people, not Becky, but like yeah. others are just, Average Joes, and I'm like, I want to be like them, yeah. like those qualities. Right. That's all. Awesome. I mean, because we always talk about on the show, like you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yes. And that's so important, like who yeah. you spend your time with. And uh, equally as important, who you don't spend your time yeah. with, like who you proactively cut out of your life yep. and get rid of that negative energy, like get that yeah. out. So do you find yourself proactively like getting those people out of your life too? Like well, I guess my circle is kind of so small. Yeah. Be and I... I'm like slowly growing it, but I think it needed to be small because like I really was in a bad place yeah. and like, yeah, people wouldn't think that from like the career I've had in the last, uh, well, six years in July, you wouldn't think that, but right. like every year, like I'm getting better mentally and emotionally. So like my circle's getting a little bigger, but what I did was just cut everyone out that mm -hmm. wasn't good. And it wasn't very many people, just a few people. Yeah. Um, and just have kept my circle so small. But I will say this, and I talked about this in the book, um, the clients that came into my life when I graduated college and got married and then moved to Charlotte, um, these men and women who were like late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s were uh -huh. like parents to me and I just looked up to them and like I'll just – they got me probably to where I could leave Charlotte and start uh, – wrestling wow so i mean that was a big group of people but like n now it's just yeah those core like four people that i talk to every single day yeah but i'm so busy That's at work really like cool. i talk to everybody at work but it's right. more like on the surface than like letting you in yeah if that makes any sense yeah is, is it hard for you to let people in at first do you have like your guard up a little bit i don't have my guard up i just like know that I only have so much time right. and I don't like, I don't like mindless conversation. Right. So like, unless like I'm going to talk to you, every, I don't, 
know how to explain it. Like surface friendships. Yeah. Like I'd rather not have three million surface friendships sure, sure. and have friendships that I can invest in totally. or like have time for. Yeah. I, does that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like absolutely. I have a million acquaintances, yeah. but like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe some stick, some don't, but yeah. the ones that stick are usually like meant to be your friend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So how's your dad's health doing right now? For He's listening? really good. Yeah. Uh, I think sometimes you have to hit, not that he needed to hit rock bottom, but like, I just, my dad just needed to slow down. Yeah. And uh, I just moved into my new place and he drove up or he got a ride up <laughs> yeah. and uh, we went and got a washer and dryer and watched movies that night and went out to dinner. And oh, like nice. that is unheard of for my dad. Really? Like he always had to be the life of the party oh, and yeah, yeah. like had a million things going on. And like now, like he'll call me, he's watching Netflix. Like he's just in such a good place and so happy and uh, resting. Like he just went so hard for so long. Like, yeah, yeah. he's doing great. I'm really happy for him. Yeah. And, and he's, he's still a- like out there, like, He's uh, just did a video with Offset and Bad Bunny, and I'm like, Dad, I'm 31 and I'm not nearly as cool <laughs> as you. Like, I love how worship he is in the hip hop community. It's, it's unbelievable. Crazy. Like, I'm there's like, so many songs that I've he's like, yeah, it. Offset's texting me. And he, I like look at the convo and he's like sending him emojis. I'm like, why are you so cool and you don't even know it? Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I love that. So he's doing well. Uh, do you guys talk about wrestling like all the time? Yes. Or? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes I can't because I'm like, dude, dad, like you're, you love me too much. Just tell me like what I'm doing. But he's like my biggest cheerleader. Yeah. Um, if I don't get a text, well, that doesn't happen because it's, if, well, if I didn't get a text from him, but every single morning he texts, my nickname's Winky. He's like, good morning, Winky. I love you. Remember, you're the best. Oh, wow. Like, every, he's my biggest cheerleader. Yeah. Like, he would do anything for me. Uh, but also, when I first debuted and they made him, uh, him my, gave me him as my manager, yeah. um, I was either going to sink or swim. Mm. Because here I'm starting out my career and I'm going out on Monday Night Raw with Ric Flair. Right. So at the time I wasn't thinking dad, I was thinking Ric Flair. And I'm like, how am I going to get over with the audience, yeah. have my moment, and share the ring with Ric Flair. So every time I went through that um, entrance, I'm like, no, dude, dad, this time is about me. And to, that pressure that I put on myself, I don't think I'd be where I am today if they didn't do that. Because I know they gave me him to elevate me. But that could have like, how do you not make it about you when you have Ric Flair yeah. out there? Yeah. So I just owned it and took it. And like, it was... I'm just so glad that I had all of that pressure on me with them yeah. being out there with me. And so now, obviously, you realize the, you know, who Ric Flair is to everyone else. Now I do. Yeah. Now yeah. I do. Yeah. I didn't yeah. then. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. So what's next for you? Like, what do you think is, you said you want a main event WrestleMania. What do you see is, is you know, in the future for you to do? What do you think your legacy is going to be long term? What well, I want to be the be? greatest wrestler of all time. Awesome. I want to, yeah. But everyone has their own styles and the wrestlers uh, are favorites. Um, yeah, I just want to be the greatest. Or, and I want to know that, or I want to uh, just like, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I want to be, I want to be the best. I love that. that yeah, I yeah. don't have another word yeah. for it. No, I just want to be the perfect. best. Yeah. yeah. I and I want to keep evolving. Yeah. Like, even when I started the robes, I like that was a whole new look. And just, I don't know, continue to show the fans, like, I don't know, that I that I, I'm putting people in seats. Yeah. And how often, you know, throughout your day, throughout your week, are you thinking about, okay, here, here's a new promo idea. Here's, here's a new angle. Here's, here's a move I need to work on. All day, every All day, day, probably. Yeah. 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 But and I mean, that. I talk to, I mean, it's not like there's different storylines or whatever, but like with it being mania right now or mania season, I'm like pretty like, man, how am I going to make this the most epic mania ever? Yeah. Not, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing yet, but yeah, that's how I, I already have my gear though. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's being made. Awesome. Cool. Charlotte, this was amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, my really pleasure. Appreciate it. Yeah.
Guys, as always, thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next time.